All right. Okay. Let's start over. Yeah. Let me start over really quick for people who didn't catch it. So welcome everybody. Kendra Dixon here. This is episode two of something we call Stall Talk, Mental Health for Horses. And at Stall High, which is an app just for horse people, we have a community of riders who are now taking responsibility to really look within ourselves to figure out what changes do we need to make to impact our horses' overall well-being. I believe that the industry does a fantastic job. Over the past uh, 15, 20 years, we've seen so many advances in health care for horses, physical health care, services, um, products, supplements, vet care, you name it. We take better care of our horses physically and we have more education than we ever have before. And they're doing great. They're living longer. However, I do see a huge gap in mental health awareness for horses. And so at Stall High, uh, the brand, the app, the online mentor program, we are waving the flag for mental health for horses. So if you are having problems with your horse that you can't figure out and you have ruled out physical pain, you've already gone to the vet, you've you bought all the products and the services and you just keep coming back with a clean bill of health, but something still doesn't add up and you're not sure why, then I'm going to invite you to keep watching because we're going to start to connect some dots. We're going to start to peel back the layers of biomechanics. Typically, when our horses aren't working, there is a biomechanical reason for it. So, Lori, I'm not sure if I'm highlighted as the speaker. I know I ask that every time, but um, I can't. I can't see the screen fully. Thank you. Okay, so there's typically a reason, a biomechanical reason. So maybe you're new to that word. Maybe you're young and you're watching right now on one of the other uh, social media platforms and you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, just think of it as everything happening behind the bit. So for me, the best way I can describe it would be um, our body in motion. So that those are the biomechanics of things. And when you really take a step back from what everybody else is doing, and typically, uh, this is what I had to do. I had to step away from everything I had been spoon fed about running barrels, everything, every approach to a barrel, every concept about training a barrel horses, what to do with my hands, my seat, when to tell my horse something I had to rewire and reprogram a whole mind to actually find something different that worked better for my horses. When I was young, I was very successful because I'd learned to whip, kick, and hustle. And I had some good aged horses that had found the path of least resistance. And by the for the most part, they did the work for me. But what we're going to do today is review several videos. So welcome everybody who's here on the active uh, live Zoom. Everybody say hi to Lori Roth. That is my right-hand woman at Stall High. She'll be moderating today. If you have any questions, um, reach out to Lori. You can contact her at info at stallhigh.com or Lori at stallhigh.com. And I do want to say a big thank you to Paul Taylor Saddle Company. They're located in Aubrey, Texas, and they are sponsoring today's Stall Talk. If you live in North Texas, then you already know. Paul Taylor Saddle Company is the best kept secret in the horse industry. So imagine a candy store for horse owners. So it is a wholesale tack and saddle supply house. Their prices are incredible. Um, it just it's row after row after row of tack, not just saddles. So every time and I'm fortunate because I live like right down the street from Paul Taylor's. But I do want to make an announcement. They're hiring right now. So if you live in the area and you are looking for gainful employment, Paul Taylor Saddle Company is hiring right now. You can either go apply in person. You can go to paultaylorsaddlecompany.com, uh, find the number, find an email, contact the store, inquire about the position. It is amazing. So you're going to get a discount on tech. You get paid vacation, and then you can earn other bonuses and it would be dangerous for me to work there <laughs> because I would have even more tech than I already do. But I love Paul Taylor Saddle Company. They've always been very supportive of uh, any event that we produce. And it's a family owned business. If you want to work in the horse industry, look up paultaylorsaddlecompany.com. Lori is going to drop a link to an online application form. So if you need help, reach out to us and we're happy to connect you.
All right, I'm going to share my screen and we're gonna get going with Review My Ride. All right, first up, I have Emily. Emily, are you here today? Did you make it? Lori, is Emily with us? She is not on right now. All right, well, I'm gonna pass her. I'll do a question mark here. Let's go ahead and just start with her, okay? And she can watch the, the replay. So Emily is one of our interactive members at Stall High, and she has done a fantastic job making progress with both of her horses. You'll see that she rides two completely different horses. And her confidence is now climbing, like she's scaling her confidence in the saddle. She is a barrel racer. She's also an active uh, member of her drill team. So she's very involved in her local horse community. And now that she's been part of Stall High, people can see her horses start to act different. They can start to see changes in Emily's riding and in her confidence and how much fun she's having. And we just celebrate with her. We're so happy to see her progress. Um, and it's really cool when people around you start noticing. and coming forward and and making you know giving compliments and saying hey what are you what are you doing that's different so emily i'm super proud of you i'm very proud of your progress if i would make any suggestions for the next step okay we talked about your stirrups you've got some knee issues i want to know the original wooden stirrups that came on this saddle did you test those after we adjusted the length my gut tells me you're gonna feel even more stable when you go back to that traditional wooden stirrup. And guys, you can get those at Paul Taylor Saddle Company. You can reach out to us and we'll tell you exactly which ones we like. You will not find them anywhere else, any lower, uh, better quality or better price. Um, so I wanna check your stirrups, Emily. And then I notice your hands are still kind of, um, they're very quiet and light. I would like to elevate them a little bit more so that you're lifting into the corners of your horse's mouth, into the soft tissue. And even though I don't see a, I don't see a crowbar, I don't see you actually pulling down with a lot of pressure into that, into the bars of the mouth. But the more you lift and get comfortable lifting, and I know like the majority of us were taught to keep our hands low. However, when you really look at the biomechanics, at the structure of the horse and how they're designed, when we keep our hands low and we, we make contact, you're pulling directly into the bars of the horse's mouth. That is bone covered by nerves and thin tissue. So they're going to be a lot more willing to please you when you lift into the corners of the horse's mouth, uh, into that soft tissue. Another thing I would like to see next, Emily, is for you to start to relax your shoulders and your arms. I would like to see your elbows um, free up a little bit. Anytime we re retain tension in any part of our body, it's going to be mirrored. That horse is going to know it. The horse will mirror that action. So I want you to pay attention to what you feel in these two horses. Go back, watch this review my ride, and then test it. When you let your elbows travel away from your torso, I know we were all taught to hold things together and hold things collected, but my word instead of saying collected is limited. We don't want to hold our horse limited. We don't want to ho hold our horses restricted. Um, collected is a softer term, but that's really what it is. I'm just going to restrict my horse's motion. Well, when we restrict ours, that's going to impact their range of motion as well. So I believe you're going to see these horses relax. They're going to soften in your hands even more. And even though it might be kind of scary, okay, to relax your shoulders and let your elbows just go into a neutral position rather than a forced hold um, or a tight position, you're gonna feel a whole different horse underneath you. So thanks for sending in your videos. Next, we have Lori on the buckskin. Lori, are you with us today? 
Yes, I am. All right. I love this. Annie, Annie should be on too. Okay. So is this you on board or Annie? It's me. Woo! I'm in love with that barrel. You got a little tub turner. How did this first barrel feel? Well, the problem, um, it was raining. It, it feels good. But the, the issue with him is, is our entry. Um, because he's, he's bad. <laughs> he's bad. Yeah, but bad he's also rainy. Him. Yeah. He's bad and he's ready. So we're going to show that little alley clip, if you don't mind. But let's, let's talk about this first. So you did a fantastic job navigating him through the pattern. I can see that he's very rady. Does he feel, does he feel uptight to you? Would you like to limber him up a little bit? Um, well, he is better since we've been working on, you know, things that you like, because when I first did a video with you, you know, you said I needed to give him room. He needs to know that he can have room because he's pinching his spine by being so tight. And like my mm -hmm. second barrel in this run was the, the nicest second barrel that he's had because he had lots of nice space. And he went up into this barrel a lot better than what he typically wants to do. See the space that he gave me there that I thought that was really nice. Oh, yeah. He went up in there and he gave himself room to come, you know, and fire straight out of that barrel. Um, he's, you know, he's a horse that you just like, you really just have to. And that was bad. I mean, my, my approach there, I was off because um, I was too far to the right there. That's my opinion on that third barrel. And then it caused him to have a little bit of a. Uh, I mean, he just didn't turn it right. I think he stumbled a little bit there. It, it was rainy and, and the, that's a really nice pin though. I mean, the sand, it's very sandy, so it was holding us, but okay. he, he so just, run, he runs out of air because of what we went through before we even got in there. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions and we're going to see if we can free him up mentally and make his job yeah. more fun. I see him get a little bit rigid, like he's a little bit stoic. And I believe that if we can soften him, not make him bendy and not make him flexy, just soften him through the turn, he's gonna, he's gonna be a lot more comfortable and he's gonna be a lot more willing to get up in there. Okay, he won't be thinking and, shut down so early. Annie, if you need to pipe in there, cause she rode this horse, until he, she just didn't get along with him. And, and so, and then he got hurt and um, she hasn't gotten back on him, but do you have the runs that she sent you from before this horse was hurt? I don't have those loaded in this program. I loaded okay. dash to. Well, okay. yeah. Andy, Cause what he had you, some smoking runs. What can you tell me? <laughs> Annie, what do you see in this video? What do you like and what's the next step of progress in your opinion? I don't know. I like his approach. He just isn't, he's not like how I see the drills you do. You're teaching them when you get up there and stop them and back them up and then turn the barrel, getting up there and stopping. That's teaching them they need to reach to get around that barrel. And I don't, I still don't think he's really reaching to get to that, that point it, where we stop them to back them up. I think he still, it, he just kind of throws himself in there and turns it. Okay. So let's and, dissect, let's start to peel back. Why is he not reaching? Well, I can see it right now. Well, you know, I think that he's, because she's already sitting. Mm -mm. 
I, I see know. something different. Lori, tell me what you feel right now. What's going on in your body or in your mind? What are you thinking? Well, I'm I'm thinking when here here's was what I had in my mind was that hands forward and still because you don't you don't turn this horse because he turns himself. And if you mm -hmm. try to help him turn, that's when you get into trouble. So it's hands forward, ride, ride to my spot and just, you just sit and you just hold your hand, you um, forward in that spot, but don't move it because mm -hmm. if you move it, then you're, then you have issues. And um, that's, that's kind of hard for me um, because I want to, I want to steer him a little bit and he doesn't want you to steer him at all. Bingo. So he's got some mental, he's got some history back there. I'm, I'm telling you, he's opinionated. Like he knows because he has felt the, he's felt the repercussion of that, right? So right now, if you can look at this screenshot, are your toes pointed straight? Are they up or are they down? Down. Lori, can you remember? Can you trace back in your mind? Well, I don't, I think, okay, so I just told Annie, I've raised my stirrups a lot, but I actually think that because it's leather that I need to raise them a tiny bit more again, because I think they've stretched. Um, I think something. So if your toes are down and you're not even there yet, so you're not even into that turn, you're trying to get there. So if you, and I'm sitting in a chair right now, I don't know who else can do this. If you're sitting at home, let's just practice, okay? Put your toes down. What changes in your leg? Do you feel anything tighten up? Well, Anyone? Your calves. And your and the top of your thighs. What else? I don't know, your knees. I mean, it's kind of your whole leg. When you go up on your toes and you're sitting, it kind of goes up your whole leg. I mean, I can even feel it on the top of my feet. Oh, definitely. So, in your oh, feet. Yeah. 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 So I promise you, cause he's, he is sensitive. He is very perceptive. He is, he, he's like, um, he's like an antenna, like he, a sponge. He's absorbing so much. Well, to him, all of those little things add up as really loud and really strong, you know, in his face. And his, he's probably, like you said, exactly what you said. He doesn't need help. He's going to turn on his own. You don't have to place him. I believe the more we can help you guys get on a, a, a level of trust to where he trusts you going in the arena and it doesn't rattle you. OK, because I think part of it was, were you still a little bit steamed about the ruckus that just happened before getting in the game? Well, I, I don't I mean, no, I can't say that I that even was still in my mind. But how when when I just went through what I went through, you, you can't I mean. It, we were you're we both kind of get a little exhausted with it. I mean, I, I wasn't mm -hmm. saying like. I'm so angry at you. Now you can go in here and just run your funny fanny butt off for me. I was not thinking that I really tried to refocus myself on my ride, you know, to yeah, get him. You, that's the one thing you always say that like, you know, it just does, him being a goofball, just it, it, you just lose your focus. Hard. Boy, it, but it's so hard to just flip, like to go from like, yes. Oh, here I am, you know, fixing this. And now I've got to have a clean, fresh mind and just, you know, ride all fluent. It's especially very, this very challenging. This one, because I did get him to go forward. And unfortunately, I should have went <laughs> with my own intuition. There's a gate on the right hand side that can mm -hmm. shut. It was open. And as we I got him to have his forward motion, we got mm -hmm. to that hole. And guess <laughs> what he did? He took that it. first out he could go. And then it was a big fight because he was going forward and you were not going to turn him in any direction. I did okay. get him to turn around. 
way more handle than what I wanted to put on the horse, but he needed to turn around and come back. Okay. So I'm glad we started with Emily. Okay. Cause I want you to go back and watch this. I want you to look at her hands, look at her shoulders, look at her elbows, all of those little things. And you get to watch her, you get to watch her make progress. Right. So when we soften up her upper body and she just lets this go, she doesn't feel like she has to hold her elbows close to her torso or hold her horse collected or restricted, we're going to see those horses change. Now, when we start making adjustments in your biology, okay, in your, um, in what, in your communication, in what you're communicating through your body. So right now, I believe your horse feels tension through your leg. I absolutely agree. Take the stirrups up even more so that they will support you. And all you have to do is just have some awareness, just some contact in the ball of your feet. Well, that's going to allow you when you have a proper bend to your knee, that's going to allow you to stay seated a lot more secure. Here's what else I notice. So we've got tension in our leg right now. And I'm telling you in his mind, he's like, I know, like he's already got a bad frame about it. He's trying to play nice. He wants to do his job, but I believe that that extra tension in the muscle right now is triggering him before he ever gets to the first barrel and then I want you to watch where your hands go did you catch that down uh-huh watch your watch your arms both arms right now oh yeah and I don't even I I'm on the outside rain too can y'all see me right here? Am I on the screen? Yeah, you are. Okay. You're coming through like that. Well, you and I, if we were hanging out together, we wouldn't, this wouldn't be our posture together. We wouldn't sit there like this. If we were going to sit on the couch and watch Netflix or something, we're just going to be like, oh, man, it's just so nice to hang out with you. Our body's going to be a lot more relaxed. And that's what I believe he wants from you. So even something just as quick as that is just having that, that brief flash. And this is what it communicated to him. Well, that's more pressure in his mind. Like she doesn't trust me. So here's how I would recommend solving that. Go ahead and get comfortable. Just like Emily's going to have to get comfortable letting all of this leave. Let those elbows free up and lift your hands. Just like you're sitting at a piano, that's okay because when you put your blinker on and you just trace around the top of the turn, look at all of this new space that horse can travel through. But when we I have a question, walk the energy. When, any. when um, you know, you make your hand like you you turn it so it's like this. Um, yes. And you're following the barrel. Are you yes. supposed to have tension on their mouth, or is it literally just you're just you holding that, there, following them? You want that smile in the rain that Ronnie talks about on Friday nights. So ideally, you want that horse, and he's a prime example. When we get him to soften up his neck and actually follow, so every vertebrae follow the one in front, and it's all following the lead of the nose. Okay, which we get to control, right? We get to, we get to, um, we get to guide to the side, just to kind of start the nose or shape the nose through the turn. Anytime you feel tension or resistance, even if it's a little bit, they're going to be more apt to pull away from it. And yet, when we can put them in the right place where their vertebrae doesn't get pinched. So we just watch the, we just watch the monitor. So we watch the, the gauges, the bells and, you know, everything on our dashboard and we watch the track. We know where to put that horse so that they're in the optimum position to do the job on their own with minimal assistance from us. Then they'll start to soften up and you'll be able to make that turn with some slack in the rain and they will willingly finish on their own and follow their nose. And when we help set the turn up correctly, 
they're going to be engaged in the hindquarters. And when they hit that, that two thirds mark where she almost is right now, that's when they're on their hindquarters. The hindquarters can engage and then push away from the turn. And that's how you start. That's when it gets nitty gritty. That's when you girls go from winning your local 1D to pro level. Though it gets to those little fractions of a second mean tens of thousands of dollars. So in the beginning, when we're all starting out, you're like, yeah, okay. So there's not a lot of difference between the value of a 4D horse and a 5D horse. You're going to pay a little more for a 3D horse. Well, then when you get to a 2D horse, you know, see the values going up. Well, then you get to a local 1D horse. There's considerable value there. Well, then think about the value of a horse that can place at a pro rodeo today. Well, there's only what, two, three tenths of a second difference there. So we're looking for those minuscule changes that you can make to take you and this horse to the next level, Lori. And I truly believe it's going to be by just continuing the process of becoming internally aware and thinking about, you know, what, what pressure, what amount of pressure was applied that he didn't like. So how can we change his opinion today? Okay, I, you won't like this comment probably, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. I'm listening. <laughs> you know, sometimes um, it, it upsets me. So I'm, sometimes you just can't ride a horse. Ooh. You're hitting a hot spot, lady. So we're actually going to talk about this tonight because you're not the only one in class who's going through this right now. So I've been getting private messages at night, right? And this is where we're really fixing to pivot and, and get into deeper waters at stall high. This fascinates me. The neuroscience of it, what is it inside our mind that is stalled that we don't even know about? And clearly it's not that you can't ride a horse. Look at, look at all the horses you've made in your career. I know. It's something it's else is holding not, you back. Not every horse matches every rider, I don't believe. And, right. you know, the last thing you want to do is hold a horse back that has mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. I commend and, you for being here, for being willing to look. Do you know how many other people just won't? Like they've had some success and so they're good with that. And instead of even considering, wow, can I do better by my horses? Is, is there a different way that's even better for them? So in the future, I can get even bigger results. You're willing to do that. And I know you're gonna lead a lot of other riders. Um, who like you and who like I have just lived our lives in the saddle. We've invested so much in the sport. It's when we, we run into those tough spots that we really question like, oh my God, why isn't this one working? Because you're right. Sometimes you're going to get a hold of one that is very unique the the horse receives information different processes information different and they're more challenging than others is that what you feel like with him yeah he's been he's been a challenge from the day he was born I mean I raised him so we've had him his entire life mm -hmm. and he's he's for whatever reasons I mean he's he has had and Annie had <laughs> went through a lot with him and got through a lot. I mean, she was actually his rider and she did a fantastic job until, until he, which I believe we ran him, he had a lot of heart and we ran him hurt and it took vets a while to find what was wrong with him. And he pressed through it until he couldn't do it anymore. And I think mm -hmm. he was already, for lack of better terms, a little fragile minded, or like you say, he's very, um, he, he's just very perceptive. And, and then when we 
we unknowingly put him through that and he ran through all that pain for probably a year Mm -hmm. until it came too much and then and then I think then that's just compounded other things and and then we now we have our gait issues and we've got some repair work to do that's that's okay we'll get it done like James says horses can't reason but they can remember so we just have to be considerate of him um, I'm glad that you didn't let it frazzle you. You don't get angry with them. You're compassionate, but you're not a pushover. Okay. So on the next run, I would encourage you very strongly. Let's test those stirrups up a little bit more and watch your toes. So if your toes point down, there's going to be more energy created in your muscles than he can tolerate. Okay. So try to ride secure and quiet. Remember what Cheryl said last night? Were you in class? Yes, it was. Yeah. She just won the 1D. Her horse ran faster than she's ever run without her having to hold her off the barrel or hustle. And good Lord, that lady can hustle. She's got a lot of drive in her. I mean, she is the, she is the, the definition of a hustle type rider. And for her, that was a real challenge for her to just whoo, calm all that down, turn it all down and just free up and trust her horse. And now look at what's happening. I believe the same is going to happen with this horse. He's just going to be a lot tougher sell. So we're going to have to be a little more patient with him. And that's OK. So let's just keep a soft elbow next time. Think about lifting into the soft tissue. And hats off to you for leaving them all standing. (laughs) Because that's not easy either. Now let's take a look at him coming in right there. So there's another one. I know in your mind, you're thinking, I've got to get him shut down before the gate. But in his mind, the recipient of that. Mm -hmm. He did a little, I mean, I was a terrible writer right there, but you, you can't really see it, but he did a jiggy jog because he really wanted to turn at the end. And I don't like my horses to turn at the end of the arena. I think it's dangerous. He needs to run to the end and stop. So when he took that little jab to the, whichever side he did, it, it popped me out of the saddle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you see him do it right there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I kind that's why I went up in my seat and I think I, really because see my hands are way forward there and then oop, there it went yeah so if and, you know he's going to do that next time have your left hand ready steering him before he has a chance to peel off and hit the gas oh okay yeah straighten him out <laughs> I didn't, yeah you said hey you want to take that fence out go on they will see the fence and stop i'm yeah. going to push him up in there mm-hmm. okay let's watch the Allie, and then we're going to move on to the next one. So okay, you kind of got to watch. He was back slippery because I'm like, wait, what's going on in this video? And then I'll. Oh, yeah. Easy. I had my baby with me. So I'm like running all over and then I lose her. And yeah, it was. So I'm back there in the weeds behind those two horses. Okay. He's up there in the corner. He goes up in the corner. There he goes. See him going up mm-hmm. in the corner back there to the left. So I caught a brief flash of you and your hand was in the red. And anytime your hand gets in the red, he's going to, he's so much bigger than you and stronger than you. He's just going to mentally freak out. I did try to be a ghost because you want me to be a ghost, but how do you be a ghost when your horse is going the opposite direction you want him to go? He has to come down. Stay in the green. She also doesn't like her reins very short, just saying. So she, I don't know, like, is there something uh, like it's just uncomfortable for her? I don't, well, like, I took it very, like, that's comfortable to me, how would that change? But if you're willing to test it, Lori, I have, I, I'm, it's more, I think, mental. You know, like she just has to be like, like just say it's okay and just go do it. 
Like that's okay, easy so for right me to here, say and do, but I don't. Right here, I see your hand drop down low and it's in the red. And again, for him, he's going to fight you and he's bigger. So for him, it's just too much. And that just keeps, it keeps reinforcing the argument. So the next time this happens, if you're willing to test short reins again, okay, and just challenge yourself if you can do it, right? Um, and I believe you can. It may not be your comfort zone, but is it worth stepping out of your comfort zone if it is his? Yes, I I mean, my reins are, they're shorter than what they were they used to be but see now he's going out the gate there he was coming forward just fine but um yeah and then when, she has to go to another video because he so, went bye bye yeah when you're here right just think about the the biomechanics how much pressure is on his bar right when right. we when your elbows stay bent and your hands stay forward you can stay up in the green and then just softly redirect the corners of his mouth. But at any time, even if it is a nanosecond, our hand drops, our elbow gets behind us, or that hand comes back here, that's putting a lot of force in his mouth. And it's not that particular moment that hurts him. It's mentally the times before that's when he's having the flashback. It triggers his, uh, his mental anxiety and stress so if you have your hands forward in that situation mm -hmm. you have he's still going to go out the gate it's so going to be are you going to lift are you going to lift up on him to get him to stop before or? he ever got there if if you can feel it if you can predict it just kind of like at that gate so right there you the where he slipped in was on your right hand side. I'm going to be listening to his body language. And before he takes that step, I'm going to very softly with my left finger, just kind of keep his nose headed toward the arena. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. Um, I have that same question kind of. So when you are, I am still trying to figure out how you, like I've noticed my hand is not turned like this it's up like this but I feel like I'm still pulling up but like when you say you follow the barrel like you're drawing around the barrel mm -hmm. you're just there following the barrel with no pressure right unless you feel like a like you know you're like hey here a good question yeah. but are so you just you're are you pulling or are you just with your finger like this this is good. like you're so here but yep like I yep. just cannot figure it out like I just okay. need so I don't go know. watch go watch in the in the zoom replay go watch Pedro and Gray Mare Pedro and Gray Mare Pedro and Gray Mare and you're gonna you're gonna hear me explain because you'll see them fall apart and they don't know how to follow their nose yet and so I let them make a mistake but if I can predict it you're gonna see my hand and my voice say hey Hey, and I talk you through exactly how much pressure I applied in that moment. Did it feel like a teaspoon of water or did it feel like a full can of Coke? So that's all in the, all in the zoom plays, go watch the little red round horse and go watch the gray mare. And you'll see that move. I call it like tapping the blinker because we put the blinker on before the turn. Well, through the turn, you might have to tap it, but you have to hand it back. Does that help? Yeah, so you're still here, but like when they need help, you just say, hey, and then you give it back. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and like your arms like this. You still have some bend here, but you're like this. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. See the visuals all all in the library. That I watched the gray mare and stuff, but I, I did watch the gray mare and Pedro. I just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just needed to explain more like exactly what, you know, when, when pressure and when not to add pressure, I guess. Yep. You can feel it coming. You'll just know you'll predict like, Oh, oh that next step is fixing to slip out of where I need it to be. Hey, if you're late, it's a moot point. 
because they're already past where they needed to be. Okay, we're gonna have to hit the gas, guys. We're at 1242. Mariah, are you here this week? She's not in yet, Kendra. Okay, all right. So let's look at, so this was a review my ride last week, first episode of Stall Talk. And this horse, beautiful stud horse, had kind of fallen apart over the weekend. As he adds speed, he was starting to get a lot more pushy. And they had, um, they had a couple of runs that fell apart. And that's when Mariah reached out. So this was her run afterwards. So that was like her first day after class, I think, Lori. Or is that run Friday night? Uh, I'm just really happy in the progress and the progress that we see happening. So well done, Mariah. All right, next up, this is Martin. Martin and Mindy here. They're not here. I'm going to talk through this run really quick. Mm -hmm. Fantastic no. run. Martin has beautiful hands. He gets the whole seat. Um, this, horse, this run right here actually landed them in the 2D. And you can see that this horse is very turny, not very big. So he is getting every single fraction of a second out of this horse. He's getting every nickel that this horse is worth. I just love it. Maybe went a little long right there on the first, but you can't, you can't fault this. I'm so happy with this run, guys. We can't pick apart every little thing. That first barrel will resolve itself. I'm just super, super proud of this run. So congratulations, Martin, when you watch the replay. All right, we're going to Mindy. This was Mindy's run, same day. Now watch this horse. Did you see how fast she came in on this horse? So I, since Mindy's not here, y'all get to be her eyeballs. Get ready. Okay. This was just over the weekend. Okay. Barrel one, barrel two. She's concerned that she's getting in paint's mouth. And Mindy, I do think we can still work on that. This is not like, oh, I'm just going to flip a switch and just be you know, 10 years ahead, or I'm just going to, you know, turn into a 1D rider overnight. No, you're doing the work. It's a process. Now, what did y'all notice difference? Because this run was, oh, if I'm correct, this was our run. This was a run back in August. This next one. What do y'all notice different already? Where her hands are. Okay. What about her horse? The levelness of his head. Mm -hmm. And it looks a lot more freer. Like it's not like, oh, ah, we're side. going. What do you notice about the speed? Look at her approach coming in here. What'd you see? What's different? She trusts her in the next video. Okay, it's super basic. See the difference in the speed? Mindy is really struggling thinking, I'm not making progress. Look how much faster she's going now. This was, this round was two months ago. And now she's adding speed. When we add speed, guys, things amplify for us and our horse. So Mindy, you're just, you're climbing up. You're making progress. It may not feel like it, but trust me, you're going up because she's going faster and she is uh, less reserved, a lot less reserved. It takes a while to train our hands, to train our limbs, our legs. I see her a lot more brave. Um, even though she occasionally touches paint, they're going so much faster. And I know that the slow work will 
click in and start to be, she'll be able to follow through. She'll be able to carry that with her when she adds speed. So anytime you get on a higher powered horse, guys, it's going to, it's going to humble you. Anytime you add speed, it can humble you for a minute. I heard something the other day that helped me so much. Don't be so focused on the results because results can vary. Just because the results on any given day aren't exactly what you thought they would be or wanted them to be, that doesn't mean you made the wrong decision. That's where I got stuck in a hole. If I didn't get the result, I assumed something was wrong. Oh, wow. So I had to learn to just find what worked for my horses, find what worked for me as well that I could um, duplicate from horse to horse, boil it down super simple so that I could explain it to horses, different horses and different riders until they all got it easier and didn't struggle with the common, um, you know, pulling off the barrel, getting on the muscle, um, needing my help as much in the turns. So the, the more we focus on the reason why we're doing it, and the less we focus on the result of any given day, that's going to expedite your success. And it's going to bring so much more joy to the, the whole journey. All right. That got Martin, Mindy. Um, this run is, is this Emma and Goose? I believe this is Emma and Goose. Is Emma here, Lori? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Emma's new. She just purchased a uh, review my ride last night. I like this, this mare. She's young. She's fast. I think this is a great segue. The conversation we just had about Mindy and the speed. When you add speed, little tiny errors are going to show up like a Mack truck. So what used to be, used to feel like a little pebble in your shoe, like, oh, that's irritating. It's going to be like, you know, it's going to be really loud. It's going to be really obvious. That's okay. That's part of the process. So when you hit that, okay, and you feel that, don't be alarmed. That's part of the process when we add speed. Now, do we need to still think about the, the foundation, all of those little tiny details that go into the, the process and the training program? Yes. We don't want to neglect that because that speed will start to turn around and bite us in the butt. Because I can see already this horse is getting a little bit defiant in the face and she's starting to either need Emma's help or she's resenting Emma's help. Can y'all see that? Right there. See, she kind of, she's sluggish for a second. You see the mouth gap open just for a second. And now she's off and running. This mare's got a lot of run to her. She's got a lot of heart to her. My goal would be, and Emma, I'll do a separate review my ride for you um, so that you and I can talk personally. Um, my goal would be to remind rate, rate, rate in such a way so that it is really clear, just like James teaches us on Wednesday, so that that horse knows exactly where her feet need to be. She knows her job. She knows what her body posture needs to be. She knows where her feet need to be and um, how not to depend on Emma's hands. That's how this horse can go from a successful local horse to next level, potentially pro level, because she's definitely got the motor. Emma, anytime you feel tension coming through the backside of the turn, or if you watch your replay, when you can see your elbow get behind your torso, you're generating a lot of force in your horse's mouth, and that's what they don't like. That's typically when you see them elevate in the head, a gap open the mouth, or they start to pull away from the turn. And I can see your body kind of leaning into the turn right now. So I would like to give you some tips. If you're interested and you want to continue this journey, we have this complete online program. Guys, if you're listening on another social media platform and you need help with your horse, text us, reach out to us, info at stallhigh.com. You can message us on whatever platform you're watching from. But uh, we really talk about the, the biomechanics, what's happening inside our body, 
that impacts our horse's body and ultimately impacts their mental health. So these are very um, easy changes to make as long as you're willing to make them. Great mare, tons of potential. So right there, she's just kind of already sitting on her shoulder. She's in a hurry to get out of that turn. I would like to teach her patience and to stay engaged in her hindquarters. Fun mare, lots, lots of talent. Potentially a very, very bright future. Okay. Annie, is this Dash? Yes. That was I before wanna... he got injured. Yeah. This is the buckskin? Yeah. Holy. Holy bit. Woo. Yeah. He's a fag cat. You feel like he likes bigger pins better? Um, well, like after this was in the spring, I or fall maybe. I think it was a fall. Okay. Um, but we but we um had gave him off for the winter and then when I brought him back he um, was really rady and I could not get him to run. There might be something else going on with him, guys, because this, it looks like a completely different horse. So do you run him on Lasix, Lori? Is this is the air issue, right? Is he the one? Annie, she may not be the place where she can answer. Is he the one with I'm, lung concern? No, that's Scooter the Sorrel that my mom runs. Um, no, we don't run him on Lasix or anything. Besides, we've been trying guana bins to get him in the arena, but I never had any uh, gait issues with him. Like um, the um, other videos I have of him, I just eased him into the arena because the eyes were pushed up. And, like, I got him in the arena, and when I said, let's go, he went. Okay. Like, I didn't have any issues. So, look where your elbow is right here. Your hand is <laughs> elevated. Oh. And in the soft tissue, like, your your hand is is where he wants it to be, in his comfort zone. And, Lori, you can make that adaptation. I, I'm so confident in you, your ability to do this. See where your your arm, your elbow was away from your torso and it was more elevated. So it was just a tiny, if you touched him at all, it was a reminder in the soft tissue of his mouth. And then he snapped right through it. Okay, right there. I will, I'll warn you because I've made, I've made that move before. Your hand gets down and behind you. Did you watch your hand right there? Yeah, I think I was like, 16 in this video oh. i'm 21 now <laughs> well you're a hell of a rider for 16 years old and 21 but the, for anybody watching like that little move where you saw that hand drop like that and came down it came down low even though they salvaged the turn i know annie did that because she felt like her horse needed it to finish the turn but sometimes if we help a little too much that horse is going to be like noted mentally they just checked that box so they felt that and they noted like i didn't need that much help so over time they can start to become resentful of that so just really pay attention to how much pressure is being applied in motion biomechanics how does the motion of our hand our limb our torso our legs um, our spurs all of that, all of our body language, how does that impact our horse's physical body and then ultimately end up leaving a memory in their, in their mind? I 
I'm curious to see what James says on Wednesday also. I'd like for him to watch these videos and let's pick his brain. Guys, if you're watching um, and you want help with your personal horse, we have a mentor program online every night, Monday through Friday, every week. You can get help. You can ask an expert, talk to a team of coaches that are here to help you sort through the problems you're having with your horse. So you can get personal help, join a Zoom call. And that's what that's what we're doing today. We're kind of going through a bunch of re reviews at one time. Okay, Annie, when was this picture? Uh, maybe a month ago. Okay. I think four weeks probably. But um, I was just watching, I think, Better Posture, Better Horse. And I realized um, my hand is up instead of turned. Okay. And at this run, I noticed when I came out of the barrel, um, I maybe had some tension up on her and I should have just had my hand probably flat and said like, like here. And that was it. Sometimes but. when they drop real early, it can kind of throw us off of our game and, you know, like they've dropped out from under us. So momentum keeps our torso going. So we really have to resist that urge and kind of suck back and get on our hips. Your, your legs will also be like thrown behind you, right? Which is what happened right here because she's steady mm -hmm. at this barrel. I, that was my fault because I oh. need to trust her and get in there. That's my fault. There you go. She's if just doing what I coming. tell her to do. If you know it's coming, get your feet ready so that they're not stuck at, you know, you, you just hit the nail on the head. I got to get her up in there. She does need a little more forward motion. She needs a little more momentum. So really driving her with your sit bones. Uh, that Yeah, when you talk about driving them, like um, you said, like driving through the door, um, and uh -huh. like you want to push your hips. You do set your hips like you're sitting, but you like, what do you mean by you want to keep pushing them? Like keep kicking them or like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I like, you really just want us to push our hip. I, I don't know. Let me see if I can get this chair to come up enough. It's not going to, it's going to go down, but it won't come up. All right. Kendra, you might do the stop share because uh, for the recording and people live, they're not going to see the zoom. They're not going to see you. There you go. All right, let me get a bigger screen here. Okay. It's an internal thing, okay? I took a yoga class one time and this lady said, pretend, because she was bringing awareness to our core from the belly button down. She said, pretend that you're gonna put on a pair of tight blue jeans, okay? And when you zip them up, you're zipping up the muscles. So you're going to call awareness to your core, belly button and down. Really, it's going to start at your rib cage here, down. And then when you get your belly button down, it's even more kind of intense. And you're, it's not, you don't want to just try to turn into the Hulk and like have too much muscle. You don't want to flex too much muscle in the saddle because you're going to bounce right out of the saddle. So there's a, and Ronnie talks about this on Fridays, about how to have that awareness to where your muscles get kind of sticky. They're loose, but they're strong. Ben talks about this too. They're ready. They're not on the muscle, but they're ready. So you're going to push straight down. And then I just watched a, a video from years ago, and this was just the best analogy I could have at the time. So I could think of at the time, maybe it will help you too. You know where your sit bones are now. So if you could imagine those are little, um, like the bottom of your sit bones, if they were scooped, okay? Once they go straight down into the seat of your saddle, I want you to scoot them forward. Like if you had little ice cream scoops on the bottom of your sit bones, you want to get in the bottom of that saddle and stay engaged. So you're actually kind of scooping your hips forward through the turn. Does that help, Annie? Yeah, as long as my I can figure out how to control my hips because I have problems with that. 
We're going to talk about that tonight. Don't miss class. Shelly's going to drop a bomb on everybody. So good. Things that she's been like the light bulbs that are clicking for her. And I'm like, oh, wow. It's, it's really good. I'm excited for her to share tonight. All right, there we're getting through that. All right, next up on the list. Thank you guys for being patient. We're at 102. Okay, this is, um, is this Maya, I think? She's not in this Zoom today, but I want y'all to listen to the difference. Look at the difference in these two runs right here. Very nice horse. This is a, a teenage gilding, um, very handy rider. I want y'all to pay attention to the difference in the two runs. Oops, I don't know if y'all could hear that. Maybe not because I deleted the sound in this video. Okay, so imagine really loud rock music right now. It's like loud, 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 big speakers, big speakers. And she's got a fan club and everybody's cheering for her like hustle, hustle, kick, kick, you got it, go on. And you can see her body reflect all of that energy in the air. Like she, she jockeyed that horse. Now it looks like she's in slack. This run was silent. Nobody was hollering at her. They weren't blaring loud music with a lot of bass. Look at the difference in how they rode. Same horse, same rider. Sometimes, guys, it's just being aware of what's triggering you. What kind of environment are you in? What, it, what stimulation is kind of kicking your heart rate a little more? And if you really reflect what's going on internally, is my, are my shoulders tighter? Am I getting a few more butterflies than I typically do? What's going on in my mind? I, I like what Ben says on, on Thursday nights, our mental strategy coach. We cannot control everything, but we can learn to control our breathing. When we control our breathing, we're a lot more capable of controlling our mind and our mental thought process. So uh, she is a new rider to the program as well. She just submitted Review My Ride this week. So she and I are going through this process. And that was, that was something that she hadn't really considered yet. For this horse, they're already super competitive, right? So we're looking for those little teeny tiny slivers, just like Lori, those little teeny tiny things that can take them to the next level. That's where the huge value is going to lie. So I would like for this horse to... Uh, just be a little more cohesive in the back end. And I feel like when we allow her to calm down as well, and we help her ride like Cheryl, like Lori, like we're all learning to do, um, limb aware, you know, aware of how much, how much any part of our body is in motion and how much is received by the horse. She, this rider right here is going to take this horse to the next level. So if that was top of the 2D right there, I believe she can get into the 1D easily. All right, we've already watched this one. Joni, thank you for being patient, my dear. I got your video late. Uh, you're having problems getting your video turned in, but I got it right here. Hmm. Okay, so this was Sunday. You went from a... 19.0 on Saturday to a 17.8. It's not plain. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about the weekend while I pull this up. We got, it was a Saturday show. It was raining. It was storming, lightning, and everything. Uh -huh. She got pretty nervous going in the gate. So I okay. tried to, you know, just kind of ease her in there like a little Sunday stroll. We've been having that trouble with the first barrel. I'm sorry. I got it about an hour ago. Um, no, ma'am. And after she went on and made that turn in the open run, I just stepped on the gas because whatever. And she sucked her first one. I mean, her second barrel up. And I've never been so excited to almost be slung off at the third. <laughs> so, and then about... She ran a 19 oh because we went, like I said, over to the fence and like, hey, everybody, and then oh. went on. 
And then about an hour later, she came back in. We didn't hustle that hard to the first. We eased in there. There was no struggle, no fight. She turned it and she went to like a 17, eight, same okay. pen, same. same. Wait, okay. Hang tight. So you sent in the Sunday run, correct? There was, if it's during the day and looks like just a covered pen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was there. Okay. Right here. That is the Sunday practice. Uh-huh. Just trying to get over her mentally, knowing that it's not going to hurt to turn to the right anymore after we had her adjusted. Yeah. Um, I can't see my control panel really quick. So it went to full screen, but I don't see the play button. <laughs> oh, Mac, help me out. All right, we may have to just watch it here on this like semi screen. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Wow. Do you feel like a new rider to the first girl? Yeah, and that was Sunday. That was for this last Saturday, and she did so easy. And then a week later, that's when we kind of struggled with that first one. Said this little practice band, but she uh -huh. was so nice. And then her second one was nice, uh -huh. and her third snapped back on it, and it was great. This looks like a different horse and rider compared and to the last video. Her, yeah. That is her first day in the little bit of love bit too. Okay, so yeah. I would venture to say she likes this bit. Now tell me what helped you the most because the last time I think James watched your video, like when we mm -hmm. went over the last video, you've made some changes clearly. So what has helped you the most to make this run so smooth? We took our stirrups up. Okay. We took our run a whole lot. And actually other than on the first barrel just trying to get that right on her second and third my hand is just about up there to her ear the entire time I mean it's just like my mouth was sore from kissing Saturday because there was no I didn't tell her to woe she did it on her own she sat and sucked them up on her own so it's just giving her did that yes I'm you? telling you yeah very much so very it doesn't much. make sense it defies everything we were taught as traditional barrel racers it's and when it, and i understand that when you speed up and you get on a fast one james has been talking about this in class um you you learn you, you develop how to trust that speed and trust that they're going to stop right but we we don't pull them when we when we start to pull or we start to limit or we override or, you know, over communicate, that's when, that's when physically they, those little physical moments for them, they're like, ow, oh, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. Well, all those little oohs and owls are going to add up over time. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with your progress. I'm, I'm happy that your horse is already responding so thanks for being here. We went a little bit long today, guys. Thank you all for your patience. Do you have something else to say, Miss Joni? Cut you off. Every after that second run of hers, we're like, what are you doing? I was like, huh. <laughs> well, it's stall high. And all the people that before were like, your bit looks like it's kind of high up. I was like, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, your reins look a little short. No, they're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody has set up and noticed her because the last time they saw her, it was mm -hmm. sad. You said your, hand, your hands felt like they were up by her ears. Okay, that may not be your comfort. I mean, because she was so, I mean, it felt so natural just instead of riding here. I mean, like, I just gave her, we've press the pedal through the floorboard and we and she took and she it and ran with it it was now, great to have one or came around with it
So guys, if you're watching and you're like, well, that sounds dandy, but my horse won't do that. My horse is going, would run smooth past the barrel. That's why we have a system. She wouldn't be able to do that if she hadn't really explained the step-by-step -step process to her mare. And she, Joni just joined the program. This is what, your second month in? Mm -hmm. First full month? It's, just, it's the, yeah, it's the second month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, things are happening but really we've fast, but you're following the system. Yeah. You're following the plan. We don't do drills at stall high. You don't drill the barrel pattern. You don't work your horse for an hour a day. You can ride an hour a day if you want to, but any work at all on the barrel pattern is there in very compressed short amounts of time. Very, very simple so that a horse can understand. And you can join, if you join the mentor program at stall high, you can actually talk to one of our coaches uh, five nights a week, Monday through Friday, where we really dissect what's going on, what is happening at the root level, causing a horse to be defiant, causing a rider to second guess themselves and their riding ability. Chances are you're a much better rider than you think you are, but something is standing in your way. Something is not adding up. And that's what we want to help you discover at Stall High and through the online mentor program. So Joni, um, everybody here, Emily, Lori, Annie, Mariah, uh, our Lori, Lori Raw, myself, like we're all learning so much. It's just fun to be part of this process. And if anybody's watching out there on another social media platform, we welcome you to reach out. Let us know if you have questions with your personal horse. You can start with Review My Ride. That's a video analysis where you send in a video and we'll start to break it down step by step to help you see what's going on with your horse that um, that that you haven't been saw you haven't been able to solve with another product or another position or another strategy. We want to help you think in a new way to get to the root issue so that your horse is physically <clears throat> capable to do what you're asking him to do, him or her and mentally willing, willing and happy to do so. Um, Lori, do you have any other announcements before we end out today? Thank you again to Paul Taylor Saddle Company, Aubrey, Texas, they're hiring. Mm -hmm. So if you want a fantastic job, paid vacations, uh, hours are amazing. Saturday, it's every other Saturday, I think 9.30 to 3.30, you have the entire month of August off because it's hot in Texas. So great family owned business, reach out to us and we will connect you with Paul Taylor Saddle Company if you're looking for a job in the horse industry. Lori, what, what else do you have? Lori Roth, I'll let yes. you take it over. Okay, so um, regarding that, if you didn't see the link or in any of the comments, you can always email me for that and any other questions you might have. If you want help with your horse or you have questions about Stall High, you can reach me at Lori, it's L-A-U-R-I-E at stallhigh.com. And then... If you need help with your horse, you can also text us at 940-291-9090. And if you are interested in a stall high bit and you're watching live uh, from any platform today, if you e want a bit and you will email me uh, by midnight tonight, I'll share my uh, personal code with you for 20% off of any bit. And that's it. Sweet. All right, everybody. So those of you who are an interactive member, don't miss tonight's class, six o'clock. Shelly, she she's making she is putting two and two together really fast and things that I haven't seen yet. And I'm like, oh wow, that's profound. Everybody needs to hear that. So it's gonna be a lot of fun tonight at six. If you're interested in joining us, just reach out. Thank you again, Paul Taylor. Thank you for everybody who submitted Review My Ride this week. And thank you, everybody else on the internet, following Stall High and Stall Talk on Tuesdays. I'll see you next Tuesday at noon. Bye, everybody.